Hi, welcome back to Cybersecurity for Everybody. I'm Dr. Charles Harry. In our last video, we tried to demystify what we mean by cybersecurity. And in this video, I want to start to define what we mean or what we would term by the threat landscape. And so specifically, the, the question that I want to talk about in this video is when we talk about cyber as a security problem, what is it that we're actually talking about? Let's kind of drill into this a little bit. So we call this the threat landscape, and it's really about trying to put cybersecurity in context. And what we mean by that is that there are a variety of different options or uh, concepts that we need to address if we want to get a better handle on cybersecurity uh, as, a, as a problem set. So that might include things like the internet, hackers, tactics, effects, and something we call the attack surface. The internet might include things like the protocols and physical structures to move information from one point of the earth to the next. It might include the motivations and skill levels of hackers. Not all hackers are of equal skill. So we need to talk about that and some of the important differences between those various groups. We need to talk about what we actually mean by hacking. What are the tactics? What are the processes that hackers have to use in order to compromise information or to create a disruption. We need to talk about the effects they can achieve. Are we only talking about data that's compromised? Are we talking about the ability for hackers to turn off, let's say, the power in a particular area of the world? We need to talk about that and how to classify that. And then finally, we need to talk about the broader, what we would call attack surface the interplay between physical and human systems that create the areas of opportunity for hackers to exploit. This is what we would call the threat landscape. So let's talk about, at a very high level, the first one of these, the internet. So what are the topics that we need to discuss in order to get a better handle on basically the field of play for hackers and defenders? Well, this would include, of course, devices, your laptops, your phones, uh, but it also includes even some of the sensors, things like uh, your Alexa devices or your Google Home smart devices. But it also includes things like physical infrastructure. It includes things like fiber optic networks. It includes microwave networks. It includes routers and switches. How do we actually understand uh, you know, the security vulnerabilities associated with the physical devices. So we're going to have to talk about that. It also includes logical structures, the instructions, the, the way in which information is actually routed. How do we actually make determinations that information should go to this particular network instead of another? So we need to talk about that. It also includes things like applications. So it, cybersecurity is not simply about the networks, it's not simply about the hardware itself. But it's also very specifically about the applications we use. And then finally, we need to talk about governance. What are the rules of the road? Is this pure anarchy and everyone kind of makes up their rules as they go? Are nation states the ones that are actually responsible for writing those rules? Or is it something different? So we'll talk about that. So when it comes to hacking, though, the hacking is done by specific individuals or by organizations of individuals. And we oftentimes use the term hackers. Sometimes we use the term threat actors, and we'll talk about that in more depth in a different video. But the important thing to remember here is that hackers have different motivations as well as skill levels. So in some cases, hackers may simply be motivated by curiosity. They're just insanely curious about how technology works and how to potentially prove that out on the internet. Uh, but there are other types of hackers that may want to actually promote a specific social or political agenda. Others may actually have financial motives. They may want to try to steal information to sell on the dark web to make money. Or they may actually leverage their access in a particular bank to illicitly transfer funds. 
Or finally, the hackers may have political or military objectives. They may be affiliated with a, a large nation state or a small nation state who are interested in understanding the motives of another. And then finally, the skill level or the sophistication of the actors varies. Not all hackers have the same ability. Oftentimes in popular media, you go to a movie and you see what? Someone sitting in their parents' basement who's able to take down an entire uh, electrical grid or they're manipulating the traffic signals in a large metropolitan area. It doesn't really work that way. While yes, there are some hackers and hacking groups that do have certain skills that allow them to engage in that type of highly disruptive activity, the vast majority do not. So regarding you know, various skill levels, we need to think about the various uh, skills of hobbyists, of activists, criminal organizations, as well as nation states. This is an important differentiator. James Clapper, who is the former director of national intelligence, said uh, in, in testimony on Capitol Hill that there are a variety of different threats that the United States face. And these, these threats come from different hacking groups. But specifically, the, the thing to take away here is that he notes that hacking and the effects of hacking have increased in size, scale, and severity. And we're seeing everything from highly disruptive attacks to exploitive attacks, defacements, attacks on point of sale systems used in retail organizations. Those are the things that you swipe your credit cards with. Um, denial of service attacks, attacks on control systems that are used to do things like manage your power and water systems. But there are a range of actors and methods of attack and targets that are all used. We see the, these attacks occurring in the commercial space as well as uh, uh, personal networks and government networks. We see hacktivists, advanced persistent threats, or what we call APTs, criminal and hobbyist groups, all alike, attacking a variety of different targets with different end effects. And specifically notes that there's not likely to be what is oftentimes thrown in, in popular culture, a cyber Armageddon, or sometimes we use the term cyber Pearl Harbor. And this is probably not going to happen. It's not going to be a single event that takes down the entire internet. That's something that we tend to hear oftentimes in the movies, but that's probably not true. So what we are more likely to see are several nations around the world engaging in very targeted and in some cases very sophisticated attacks that can have a variety of effects. And so we, either as consumers or policy analysts or, or corporate executives or part of a leadership team, need to have a much more nuanced and sophisticated understanding of what threats are out there, who is conducting them, and ways in which we might be able to build resilience in our systems both the technical systems as well as our human systems. And that's really one of the fundamental learning objectives of this entire course. So in addition to the hackers and the effects that they want to engineer, the threat landscape also includes the tactics, techniques, and procedures, what we call TTPs. And these tactics can include a variety of different terms that maybe you've actually heard of when you've read uh, a news article about a cyber event. They include things like phishing, where I'm sending you that illicit email and with the hope that you click on a link. And when you click on that link, that allows me as the hacker maybe to engage in some sort of nefarious activity. So that email that you get from the Nigerian prince isn't really from a Nigerian prince. But it can also include things like ransomware, where I you know, encrypt your hard drive on your particular computer and I demand payment in order for me to send you the key that unlocks it. It might also include something that we call a distributed denial of service, where now your computer uh, or your web application server is that much slower or doesn't work altogether. It can include other terms like privilege escalation, infrastructure, virus, Trojan. It might also include malware-less attacks, where Attackers are not actually including particular programs to run on your uh, uh, run on the disk of your computer. They're using what we would call a variety of different scripts like PowerShell and batch scripting. 
And then finally, there might be attacks on critical infrastructure, what we would call industrial control systems or ICS attacks. So when we discuss threat landscape and what we mean by hacking and the tools and techniques, we'll talk about these terms in more depth. Finally, after those tactics by hackers have been employed, they're engineering some sort of effect. That is the goal of the hacker. The hacker is not simply interested in moving around your network. The hacker actually wants to achieve some sort of goal. So we need to talk about in a much more sophisticated way the effects that they seek to engineer because there's a variety of different effects that they can achieve. Everything from stealing information to manipulating control systems to demanding payment. And so when we in fact take a look at a lot of the ver various cyber events that are occurring, things like attacks against the transportation networks in San Francisco, or attacks on the electrical grid in Ukraine, or industrial attacks in Germany, or Iran, or in the United Arab Emirates. There are a variety of different effects. So we need to talk and understand and have a more sophisticated language for understanding about hacker-induced effects. We also need to talk about how the costs, the impacts, can be measured. Because oftentimes in this space, we use a variety of different terms and we don't have a consistent way of measuring severity. Because not all cyber attacks are frankly a public concern. Are you really concerned about an attack on a retail, uh, a, a retail giant? Well, you might be if your data was compromised. But does that mean that the White House should be involved? Maybe, maybe not. What if your, your favorite local restaurant has its network compromised and it's taken down for two weeks. Should the White House be involved? Should the United Nations be concerned about that issue? Should other countries be concerned about that issue? Probably not. So how do we make a determination? Well, and that really boils down to what are the costs? How do I measure it? And how do I actually make a determination of whether this is a private problem or a public concern? So these effects can be certainly measured in a variety of different ways, and they can be categorized in a, in, in a variety of different ways. And a lot of individuals, the technologists who are charged with actually protecting these networks, need to actually be thinking about the end effects that are of most concern. In a fairly recent SAN survey going back to 2017, what we see here is that uh, the respondents in this particular case rank order the effects that they're most concerned about. So it's not that they're just concerned about hackers and hacking. They're actually concerned about very specific effects that can be engineered against their network. And this very simple chart references a variety of different effects that they have often seen. So in some cases, they've noticed that most effects are in fact quite a nuisance. They're much more of a nuisance rather than a real impact. But they are concerned about system damage. They are concerned about other types of data being compromised. So understanding effects is critical. And then finally, we have to be worried about the, the attack surface because our individual networks, our organizational networks, and our government networks are interdependent and complex. It is a mix of business and personal devices in it working together with a variety of different services, many of which are globally distributed how do we protect all of that? How do we protect the data in transit? How do we protect the data that's resident in any one of those data repositories? And whose laws actually matter? Whose laws carry weight? If I'm sitting in the state of Maryland using a service that is hosted in Texas and there's a compromise to that particular business's network in Texas, whose laws apply? State of Maryland? State of Texas? What if they're different? What if they have different thresholds for what needs to be reported? Does that matter? Let's make it more complicated. What if that business operates in Ireland? Do they need to follow Irish law? U.S. law? Texas law? Maryland law? So the internet is a story of complexity, interdependence. It's globally distributed. Are your defenses optimized? 
And so these are some of the fundamental questions we need to address in this course. And then finally, we have to attribute the attacks to individuals. Attribution or the ability to identify who is actually responsible for the hacking uh, activity is really complicated. They use proxy infrastructure, the ability to use other devices to make it look like it's coming from somewhere else. So if the hacker is operating in Houston, Texas, they're actually rerouting all their communications through Romania. They use cutout identities or the ability to use fake IDs, fake individual names, addresses, phone numbers. It makes it more complicated. And so law enforcement has a really difficult time trying to understand not only the tools that are being used to conduct the hack, but also from where to hide. So in this video, what we've covered is trying to not simply demystify what we mean by cybersecurity, but start to define the broader threat landscape. The internet and how information traverses, the threat actors and motivations, the tools and tradecraft that hackers use, we take a look at the effects that they achieve, and finally, the broader attack surface. In future videos, we'll delve deeply into each one of these areas. I hope to see you next time.